it's going to sound great if they say, oh, yeah, get this thing and you'll never get cancer. That sounds great. You're going to live longer. You don't die if they can figure out how to alter your genes. Sounds awesome. That's not, that's not the reality of what's going to happen. Hello and welcome to the Gospel Truth. We appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in uh, again. Absolutely. Sorry on the last video we had got audio problems. Our uh, <clears throat> microphones weren't working, so we uh, hope the audio is a little better today. Yeah. Uh, we promise. I know someone was commenting about the music underneath. The music underneath was to hide the audio problems. There was a <laughs> sound. Uh, so this, should, this one should be much better. Yeah. Uh, but we appreciate all the comments. Um, uh, well, I should say we appreciate most of the comments. <laughs> Um, we appreciate that you're commenting and yeah, involved. Absolutely. So tonight we want to talk about uh, the end times and specifically what it's what it was what it will be like leading up to the end of days and uh, and kind of some things that that one can expect because a lot of those things we're already seeing. Uh, we want to talk about a little bit about the differences between um, what Jesus talks about as far as what to expect in the last days, and then really what... Uh, the, Jesus talked about the last days a couple of different times. Right. So, um, obviously, there's the big, long passage about uh, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, those kinds of things in the last days, okay? What Jesus was referring to there was a period of time that... Uh, constituted the last days. So a lot of people say, well, we've been seeing wars now forever, and we've been hearing rumors of wars. Well, that's because we've been in the last days for quite some time. Uh, just that there is war doesn't say that it's last days. That's right. Because there were wars before Jesus, and there were wars you know, immediately after and during his life here. So it's not, it's not just that there's war or rumors of war. That's just one aspect of what constitutes the last days. That's right. And we really entered into the beginning of the last days, the last days commenced when Jesus went back to heaven. That's right. The early Christians, you know, there there are, um, I was actually reading a book about groups of people who have predicted the end of the, <laughs> the end of the world, that the Messiah was going to return, and how, you know, it was like a psychological study on how you get people to believe something specific, even in the face of disinformation. So, what I mean by that is, um, you know, someone predicts a date, which is, the, the Bible's very specific that we don't know the day or the hour. So be very leery of people who are predicting specific dates. Yeah, I've wanted to predict the dates, and I was yeah. really hoping for a date, but it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it, I learned my lesson. It That's right. That so this was a psychological study on uh, when people predict a certain date, and that date doesn't happen. You would expect people to then uh, change their belief, but they don't. More often than not, they double down and pick another date, right? right. They, they, they hold on to the belief right. that, uh, that this person knows when the end time is right. coming. So if you that, want to start your own following, just go ahead and start predicting now. Basically. Uh, yeah. It's happened just numerous that, yeah. times. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's happened... Um, numerous times, as far back as literally 50 years after Jesus was right. resurrected. Right. So when he says we're in the, we've are in we been in the last days for 2,000 years, it's actually true. People have been predicting the return of the Messiah for literally 2,000 years. Um, but th there was another time that Jesus talked about what it would be like at the end of days. So there are the last days, and then there are the end of days, right? And we'll start in, uh, there's, a, there's a, a verse that is mentioned in three of the Gospels, at right. least Matthew and Luke. Matthew and Luke, I think it's in Mark too, but we didn't look that up. But yeah. a, we'll go down the bottom or the top, we'll yeah. do the whole screen of the verse. Yeah, I'm going to read Luke, he'll read Matthew. Sure. But, so Luke's chapter 17, verse 26 says, And as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay? Now also in Matthew... In Matthew uh, 24, 38, uh, uh, 37 actually starts there. It says, it's almost identical. But as the days of Noah were, so shall 
so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the day, days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah, see, that, and that's an interesting one because it talks about uh, the death of everyone, right? Right. And we'll talk a little bit about the death of everyone because I got uh, tripped up at one point in on that verse. But I want to make mention real fast of um, you always have to remember this is this should not be a controversial statement, but sometimes it is. You should always remember the fact that uh, Jesus is not talking to the church. He is talking to mainly his disciples, right. but more often the Jews of the day, right? right? Um, the Old Testament is the same way. So for you to just dive into the Gospels or to dive into the Old Testament and grab a scripture and keep it for yourself, it's uh, more often than not, it's um, something you shouldn't do, right? You should spend most of your times in the epistles of Paul because they were written to the or the epistles in general, I should right. say, Peter and the New Testament. I, I prefer the epistles of Paul because, as Paul says in Galatians, he was actually sent to the Gentiles, and Peter and the others were sent to the Jews. Right. They were they were technically talking about the same thing, but they had different uh, nuances to Paul's message because it was specifically to the body, right? As opposed to so I could talk to a, a member of the body of Christ about Jesus, or I can go talk to a Jew about Jesus, right? Uh, the Jew's going to have to deal with a lot of things that the Gentile who's never heard of Jesus will not have to, right. because he's got to unwind everything that he's learned versus someone who was brand new. So th th those are the differences in Paul and, you know, Peter and John and James. Right. So spend most of your time in Paul, uh, but most of your time in the new te in the New Testament, right? And other than like the last chapter of each of the Gospels, the the time of Jesus doesn't really it isn't really the New Testament, right? It, it's it's the New Testament the way we've divided the Bible, but it's still every every day that Jesus was on the earth before he died, he was under the law, under the Mosaic law. So up through all of that time was he was still operating and talking to people who were only operating under that law because right. he had not yet set them free. This is exactly why what he says to the disciples is, um, in that day you'll ask me nothing, but you'll ask the Father in my name. You can, you can contrast that with the way he told them to pray at the time. So on the one hand, what he's saying is, in the future, future in that day is what he's saying. You'll ask the Father in my name and he'll give it to you, right? But then when the disciples asked him how to pray, he didn't pray in his name. He prayed, our Father who art in heaven, right. hallowed be thy name. So he prayed a, a prayer that was legal at the time, that would not be legal later on, because right. in that day you have to ask the Father in his name. The power is in the name, right? Having said that, that's he, all the prerequisites. Yeah, 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 yeah. He talks about the end of days or the or the the coming of the Son of Man. So I said all that to say the coming of the Son of Man is the second coming of Christ. It is different than the rapture, right? So as Christians have heard a lot about the rapture and. Some believe that, you know, it's a pre-trib. Some believe it's a mid-trib. I'm not going to quibble with that, right? I believe it's pre-trib because I believe what Paul says, that we were not appointed to wrath. And, uh, and, and then some people say, but the wrath is going to uh, not occur until three and a half years in. That's where the mid-trib believers come in, you know? The wrath doesn't actually occur to the second three and a half years. So when Paul says we're not appointed to wrath, we're staying for the first three and a half I do not believe that because I don't believe the Antichrist can show up at all until we leave. Right? Paul right. also talks about that. Right. We have that. We have the same belief on there. If we're wrong, we're wrong. Yeah. Because it, it, it <laughs> no one came out and said the rapture happens and then the tribulation starts. If there was that verse, we wouldn't have the the debate over it. That's right. So my belief is that when he talks about the days of the coming of the Son of Man, he's talking about his second coming. 
there's a period of time there, in my belief, that is the is a period of time between when the church, the when the body of Christ leaves the earth. There's a period of time between that and the second coming when he returns. Okay? And there's a lot that goes on there. You can go into Revelation and read about um Essentially, the, the cornerstone of that will be a one-world religion. It will be a one-world government, and it will be a one-world monetary system, right? So right now, you, you, don't, you don't see, you see uh, the United States have the dollar. You see uh, Europe have the euro. You see the Japanese have their own currency. The Chinese have their own currency. You, you see all these different yeah, currencies. And Brexit is temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might last for a while. I'm going back but... to the pound, baby. But, um, well, so you see individual com- countries right now with individual monetary units. However, you, you also see the framework of all of the monetary systems of the world tied together, right? right? So if the dollar, if the U.S. dollar were to crash today, the world's economy would crash, Right? If the Chinese, if the China is the, uh, the yen, yeah, right, is that Japanese? Yuan, yuan, it's the yuan. Yeah. yeah. If it crashed, the the world's economy is because all of the economies of the world are tied right. together. It's because there is a framework in place for the last days, right, for the end of days, to have a one world monetary system, and I do not. Uh, there is a verse in Revelation that talks about that being the dinar, which is what they use in uh, Iran today, which was the former Babylon or something. Anyway, that would make sense to me, but I would never Babylon's say... Babylon's in Iraq, and... Babylon's in Iraq. My guess, my guess is it'll be digital. Yeah. It's some sort of yeah. cryptocurrency that will take over the world, that will connect everybody, because numbers, we don't have to worry about languages all being the same already. Everybody can use Bitcoin. I'm not saying it's Bitcoin. I'm not saying Bitcoin is what the prerequisite or whether that's what's going to happen. But that kind of concept of something you can only access if you follow the leader and you follow the religion, you know, that's a good way to keep it. Keep yeah. it out of people's hands. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But Makes sense. Knows? But point being, right. we don't know, right? We also don't know what actually, we have theories on what the actual religion of the world will be. It will not be Christianity because the church, right. the body of Christ leaves. So it will, if I had to guess, the Jews actually have to accept the Antichrist and give him the throne of David in the temple, in the rebuilt temple. So if I had to guess, it would be some form of uh, uh, Islam and Judaism, some morphing of the two right. together uh, to, to make it palatable for both the Jews who will not convert to Islam, and the Muslims who will not convert to Judaism, right? So, so that you'll have a guy, a, a leader, a figure. Right. They talk about the, there's a branch of Islam, I believe it's Shia, who, Shia Islam, Islam who believes in the, the return of the Mahdi. Yeah. And that, that's a figure. They also, there's a belief about Jesus coming back to them, but the guy's going to have to be acceptable to the Jews and, and the Muslims at the same time. Yeah, and a very interesting side note, what he talked about is there's a, br- there's a branch of Islam that believes in the 12th Imam or the, uh, the Mahdi or, you know, um, Jesus. Their 12th Imam would be their savior, right? Jesus would technically be their antichrist, right? Uh, G- I think Jesus is coming back to say, no, I'm not God. This guy is God. the representative of God. I was watching an interview with a um, with a uh, devout Jew who um, he wasn't quite like Orthodox Jew. He didn't have the tassels, but he did. It does wear a yarmulke, and so he and he's very schooled in the theology of Judaism. And someone was interviewing him, asking him what his view of God was, and what he said was. Uh, that uh, true Jews don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, clearly, right? Everybody knows that. But what he, he said something interesting, and he, interesting, and he said um, what they believe is um, that there will be like a political figure to stand up and, uh, and kind of show the world, right, 
the the Jewish religion is the right way. And I thought to myself, that sounds a lot like the Antichrist. So as it turns out, this this is where my belief comes from. So as it turns out, you know, there are there I won't speak for all Jews, but there are some Jews, clearly, who and this guy's a prominent Jew. You would know him if I said his name. There are some Jews who believe um the same thing that Muslims believe, right? That there's a guy coming back who's going to sit on and unite the world. Okay, so th- there is a uh, that's my be- that's why I believe it'll be some meshing of the two, yeah. Islam and Judaism, uh, true Judaism, right? Not like uh, Reformed Judaism, right? Um, and then of course, uh, as far so that's the religion. Um, th- there will be a one world leader that is basically what we just said. Everybody's. One world government is what I mean. They'll, you know, they're they're going to be worshiping the same guy. Right. So you see the framework of that today, but I also see that it might take some time to get there. So, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. Right. And and there are a few prerequisites. uh, Just judging by the the Book of Revelation, like we're we're in a place that didn't exist for a long time. Israel is a country. Yeah. That. You know that wasn't ha- that didn't happen until the last seventy ish years. Yeah. So it, from there were two there was a two thousand year gap in that. So you know if if the Book of Revelation is focused on Israel, Israel had to re exist as a nation. So we've entered into that. We've met one of the prerequisites before any of these things happen. That doesn't mean because Israel started that it'll be you know next week. It could be a thousand years from now, yeah. and Israel could exist that long, but it it had to happen again. So it couldn't, like we weren't in a position to have. You know, this is before our lifetime, but but for thousands of years, almost two thousand years, no one was in the position to be able to have that happen. So some of the things are lining up in ways they've never had, they've never happened before. Israel exists again. the The connectivity of the internet uh, allows you know I could text yeah. somebody in Africa right now and have a response right now you know it, there's no there's no distance anymore as as we're connected that way so everything is lining up that we could have have all of these um all of these things in existence but jesus said something else very interesting which was that the another marking of that end of days will be the same as it was in the days of noah that's exactly right okay so what the the question then is what does that mean? Why, first of all, why would he say that? Yeah. Why is that the thing that happened? And so what he what signaled was the, the days of Noah. Right. And when Jesus says that, it points you to it as something we should definitely look up. So what was the days of Noah? That's right. What was happening at the days of Noah? So yeah, Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to read the first eight verses here. Again, we use King James because it's copyright free. So are all the plays of 1924, if you want to look that up. And it came to pass... When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, we'll come back to that phrase in just a second, Mm -hmm. saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4, there were giants uh, in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. So the children of the the sons of God and daughters of men were giants. Mm. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. The word giants there is Nephilim. Mm -hmm. The word mighty men of renown is Gabor or Gibberim. Verse 5, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart, at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing. So not limited to man, man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But... Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mm. And then, really, verse 9 tied into that, we'll get to in a second, but it talks about the generations of Noah. It says there also that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Mm. So, 
Yeah, Noah was a uh, a Second Peter two five calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. Okay, um, when you this is how you read the Old Testament, right? So uh, righteousness is what we are, right? So wh- whatever, if, if Noah was a preacher of righteousness, you can find parallels in there as far as righteousness bridges over to what we are, right? So what it's telling you there is that uh, Noah was pure, right? Right. Just like wh- what Paul says about us is that because we're righteous, because we are the righteousness of God, right? Not our righteousness. We are God's righteousness through the Son, through Jesus Christ. And what that does is it makes us blameless, pure in God's eyes, right? right. It's just, the ark was a picture of the rapture, so to speak. There was a group of righteous men, that, uh, uh, a, it was, excuse me, a righteous man, and his family were saved from the destruction. Right. Okay? Same thing happens to the church, right? A, a group of righteous people will be saved from the destruction of the earth right. again, right? So that's the parallel. Right. But Noah was pure in right. God's yeah, eyes. The word, the word um, Noah was a just man, that word just is generally translated righteous. Mm. And it says, and he was perfect in his generations. Perfect is almost always translated without blemish. Mm. So it's like it's the um, like they had to offer a perfect lamb, a spotless lamb. Jesus was the spotless lamb, but every year they had to offer the spotless lamb. That same word applies to Noah. He was spotless. He was not tainted. He was without blemish. He was upright and complete. Yeah. So it's a very interesting way to describe someone. In that, so you got to remember this was written in Hebrew, right? So it was a very interesting way to describe Noah. He was untainted. Okay. So when we say we're untainted today in God's eyes, that is spiritually. Okay. So through the the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we become the spiritually, we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So that spiritually we are untainted. They're talking Noah naturally untainted. Big difference. Jesus, he he talked earlier about um, sacrificing the untainted lamb. Okay, So the Jews had to bring an untainted lamb to sacrifice to cover their sins. Jesus came as the untainted lamb and died once for everything. All of our sins. So whereas uh, if I were a Jew in the Old Testament and I had committed sin, I'd have to take a lamb that was untainted, sacrifice it, my sins were covered. Jesus was the untainted lamb that covered everyone's sins. Once and for all. Once and for all. Everyone. So, so through him, we are untainted, spiritually speaking. right? But back then, they weren't spiritually spiritual people. They were natural people. So it was an interesting way to describe Noah as being naturally untainted. Right. So that 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 passage is just eight verses, and just eight verses goes from the sons of God hooked up with the daughters of men, and they they produced giants. Mm. So I know there's a theory out there. I, I I hadn't heard it before. I've heard that people have heard it. That the sons of God there replies to people or applies to people who are were of the line of Seth that they were the mm-hmm. the healthy God, um, good people the ones who followed Jesus and that the daughters of men applied to Cain. The word the phrase sons of God does never applies to they, it doesn't apply to hu, uh, any humans except um, well except just a little bit and I'll tell you that in a second. But really, it's always when it says sons of God, bene ah Elohim means angels every time it means angels that can be applied to direct creations of god so so adam would have been a son of god and jesus was the son of god and because of because of the sacrifice of jesus because we accepted him we become sons of god we become that same level of like direct offspring of god that's how we're engrafted into the vine and we're partakers uh, with jesus of his righteousness but 
The phrase sons of God is only used, I think, four times in the Old Testament, and every time it's applying to angels. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about angels, angels. came down mm -hmm. and hooked up with human women. Mm -hmm. They had children, mm -hmm. even though it says, uh, Jesus said the angels neither marry, or, uh, neither are given a marriage or marry. In heaven, they came down to earth and did it. So they had the ability. Mm -hmm. It's just not what you do in heaven. Mm -hmm. And it may be on a spiritual plane an impossibility there in heaven, but on earth they hooked up with the daughters of men to produce giants. Yeah, and hey, by the way, this is not the only time this story was told. This is the Bible's account of this story. That this story shows up in all ancient texts, ancient cultures. Right. All of them. Yeah, uh, just the ones that we know are, I mean, if you look at anything uh, Egyptian or Roman Samaria. or Greek, it's always the same thing. And you find it even in like some of the Nordic you know, religions, like I think Thor was a half god. Yes. So this, that same concept it is existing all along. It is daughters of men. Go ahead. So the Greeks would have, they had a group of gods who slept with women and created demigods. So Zeus was Hercules' father, and his mother was a human, then created a demigod in Hercules, who was a man of renown, a man, a strong man, a man of renown. That's the same, same story. Right. Okay? What the Greeks and the Romans did, they took these old texts, and they created mythology around it. Okay? The Bible's just taking the story, right? From the from from the Jews retelling of it, right? Or from it was passed down orally, right? So Yeah, the Bible Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, and Moses was a character very late in the story of those books. Yeah. So it's there's a whole lot of oral tradition before that. Two ways to look at that. Uh number one, it um uh, validates the Bible's telling of such a story that all other ancient cultures told the right. same story, okay? On the other end, it validates those stories that the Bible tells it, right? So when we learn mythology in school, you, it's a different twist when you think that story came from a real story. Does that make sense? In other words, I'm not saying that Hercules was an actual demigod. What I'm saying is there was an actual demigod, and the Greeks assigned it Hercules right, to and, make a story. Right, and we have we have in the Bible saying that they created the mighty men. They were the yeah. men of renown. They were well known ar around there. So Hercules may have been, you know, the stories around him may not be true, but that may have been one of them. Yeah, uh, there's there's not any telling in the Bible of their names, except for one that began to become one, and that was um, Nimrod. Nimrod! He began to become one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a different part of the story. Yeah, that's a interesting. Uh, Nimrod's an interesting character, too. But, um, so, what we have here is a generation of people who were tainted in their bloodlines, Okay. When you have an angel come down and sleep with a woman, the offspring of that is not a human. Right. Okay? That's the tainting of the bloodline. It got to a point where Noah, now some would say his entire family, the Bible says Noah was untainted. Okay? It got to a point where at least... So, for the sake of argument, I'll say Noah and his family. That there were eight people on the earth who were untainted, naturally. Okay? When you see this, so people will say, the argument is um, from atheists and, you know, I think even Barack Obama at one time talked about when someone asked him about uh, another religion, what he said was, hey, Christians weren't so great either. You know, a loving God is, you know, there's a couple of times where he murders an entire group of people. So what you'll find is, if you really study the Old Testament, right. what you will find is that when God 
murdered an entire race of people, it was because their bloodlines were tainted. Right. So, so he wiped out everybody except yes. Noah and his family to start and, over. And then later, uh, he's when Joshua is leading the armies of Israel and they go into the Promised Land. He gives them, God gives them specific tribes to wipe out entirely, man, woman, children, and animals. Yeah. Animals both times. Animals was part of what was wiped out in the flood intentionally. I mean, yeah. it's, it's mentioned. To me, that says that there was a genetic tainting of them as well. Yeah. Uh, but he, he was told to wipe them out entirely, and that sounds harsh. Like, it sounds terrible. You're killing babies. Well, the flood killed babies, too. But what? Why? What's the point of that? And that was they were not human. They yeah. weren't uh, human enough. They weren't human. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, Peter in the New Testament calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. Okay, that righteousness is a uh, signif signification. Is sure. that a word? Yeah. That that righteousness signals. Uh, saving. Okay? So, Peter would allude later on to the fact that Noah preached to them. They knew it was coming. It wasn't like God. We're talking for a hundred years right. it took Noah to build this ark. So, for a hundred years, Noah preached righteousness to them. The world is coming to an end. You should change what you're doing. You should, uh, you know, get things right, right. Right. He preached to them. Right. And he was not the first generation of preacher. No. Like Enoch was his great, 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 great grandfather. His great grandfather, Methuselah, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but there's an exact translation of his name, which basically means I die when the flood, I'll die. And that's when the flood comes. Yeah. And then Lamech was his father as well. But Noah was preaching righteousness and he would have. The only people to preach to were people who were tainted. Yeah. So, uh, what if if I had to theorize? Okay. So, up till now, uh, we've told you what's in the Bible. Okay. Now, and I and I'm more than happy to tell you when something is just my opinion. Okay. This is my opinion based on what Peter and Genesis say is that at a certain point there were more than just Noah, untainted people that were more than just Noah. And what Noah was charged with doing was telling those people, you need to stay pure here to be saved. And it got to a point where Noah was the last one. He was it. He was the only one that was left. And God said, it, it, actually, when, when it talks about the ark, it says, uh, you know, God put the animals on the boat. And Noah got on the boat, and God shut the door. The Lord shut the door. Noah couldn't even shut the door to that ark. So God literally saved them, right? First Peter three nineteen through twenty one says, "By which also he went and preached into the spirits of the prisons." Uh, he's talking about Christ, right? The verse before, for Christ also had suffered for sin. He's talking about God, but also he went and preached into the unto the spirits. In prison. This is why I say you should read Peter. Very interesting. 21st. Which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God. When once the long suffering of God. Waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was a preparing. Wherein few. That is eight souls were saved by water. Okay. So what he said is. God was long suffering. He waited until the very in. He waited until it was just Noah. Noah was found untainted in his day. Right. He was the one. And God saved his family, right? right? So, the Bible very clearly says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son right. of Man, right. right? So, when the second, right before the second coming, the same thing you, that you found in the days of Noah, you'll find today. Right, Genesis right. six. If we're in the if we're in the end days. Right, Genesis six eleven says the earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Mm. So all flesh was corrupted. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. 
Mm. So the what is part of the days of Noah, what will be, is the same thing. It will there, there was evil in their hearts continually, and the earth was filled with violence. Mm. So you see some of these. Um, I haven't watched it, but I've seen a trailer that some of the things like the purge, where people mm. just go out and start killing at random. It's that same concept. Like it's just going to be filled with violence everywhere, everywhere you go. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one through four says, This know you also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be now think about this, okay? Perilous times. And what signifies those perilous times? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, in the fifth verse is a good one, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Okay, so what Paul is talking about, spiritually speaking, is uh, the. If you notice, those are uh, uh, being selfish and being uh, high-minded and being uh, lover of self and being covetous, and those aren't really like those are like spiritual qualities, if that makes sense, right? So, so Paul is Paul is talking about a a state of your being, right? He's not really talking about necessarily things you do. He's talking about a state of your being. When, you, when in, in your heart, if you're a covetous person, or if you're a blasphemer, or if you're a lover of self, or a selfish, or, those are like, from those people, steer clear, right? So he's talking about a spiritual thing. What Genesis talks about is a natural thing, Right? So what you see, you, you do see some things in the natural happening, to, happening today, such as, uh, man, there was a story. The, number one, if you're not seeing the stories on UFOs that they're priming you for, that's number one, right? They're, they're, they're priming you for something to come down. Right. It's, it's, it was in the new. There's a lot going on. A lot. There was a... At least one minute of video released uh, is from a 2004 encounter with the, I think it was the USS Nimitz, where naval officers actually tracked, a, they called it a Tic Tac, but a UFO. There's rumors that there's at least an eight minute video, and the, the Navy just came out today, uh, this week, I think it was, and said, well, yeah, it's, on a, it's an unidentified flying object. They're not saying it's an alien, but they're saying they have no idea what it is. That's right, and they're saying uh, to even talk about it is uh, a national security issue. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Then you've got the you know the recently released Netflix on document <laughs> the recently released documentary on Netflix that uh, is Bob Lazar where he worked on a spaceship. Why why is all this coming out now? Right. Right. And why, Tucker Carlson why? on Fox News doing stories about UFOs. Think and, about that. And we've been priming ourselves with entertainment for the last fifty years. Bingo. So we're being primed. Right. To not be, uh, to to expect something to come down, right. right? That's number one. Number two, you find uh, you find story after story after story these days about um, genetic altering of the genetic code in humans. Okay. For me personally. I would never accept anything that would alter my genetic code. Okay? Now, this is where you get into, you know, like the conspiracy theories, which I, I hate that word because every conspiracy theory is uh, has truth to it. What, what happens is people take a truth and they form a theory around it, which is exactly what scientists do, right? They form a theory around it. What tends to happen is you, you're met with disinformation, much like people, we're back square one, 
Much like people who follow someone who says they know when the earth is coming to an end, right? And then um, it doesn't. And the, then the person just predicts another date. Right. The, the disinformation comes when the act doesn't happen. And yet people double down on the belief. That's what happens to conspiracy theories, right? But if you're never met with disinformation, then it's just a theory that you right. have, right? Just like everybody else. So I, so I, I, I do not ascribe to the, uh, the uh, moniker of conspiracy theorists, right? Um, because there's always truth to it. So, right. uh, and you can get way out from the truth and yeah. you have with crazy ideas. Yes. But there, there's a kernel of truth. Yes. So don't take anything. Don't, for God's sakes, when the Bible in, in Revelations talks about uh, you in the in the end times not being able to buy or sell anything, save for a uh, a mark on your uh, forehead or right hand, on your forehead or your right hand, yeah. do not take a chip in your right hand to you to buy and sell stuff. Do you know what I mean? So some of that's common sense and knowing what the right. Bible talks about being in the last days. And some of it about like the genetic code alter alterations uh, are more theoretical, but still something I wouldn't do. Yeah, the, I mean, it's going to sound great if they say, "Oh yeah, get this thing, and you'll never get cancer." Yeah. Or get this thing. You know, they, there was a, some there was some gene altered just in the last week, uh, last couple of months actually. I'm sorry, not last week, last little bit here, where there was a particular kind of worm, and they edited a couple of its genes. And it lived, its lifespan was 500% of what the normal was. So that that's the idea. That sounds great. You're going to live longer. You don't die if they can figure out how to alter your genes. Sounds awesome. That's not, that's not the reality of what's going to happen. That part could happen, but everything else is going to make humans not humans. That's right. Which is Satan's plan and has been from the beginning to rid the world of humanity. That's the point. So there was an article in the uh, in, a, in the Guardian this past week that he sent to me that was scientists use stem cells from frogs to build the first living robots, and we'll post the the link up here so that you can go read it for yourself. Okay, the goal of Satan prior to uh, prior to Adam and Eve, uh, Satan controlled this earth. Okay, he was in complete control. Uh, after, so, so God destroyed the earth at one point, created man in his likeness and his image, and, uh, and then man who had dominion, God gave man dominion, man gave that dominion, Adam gave the dominion over back to Satan. Not Lucifer anymore, right? Lucifer was the fallen being. Satan was on this earth, right? Lucifer was the, so when you talk about like the angels coming down and mating with women or whatever, you know, uh, there is a, there is a celestial being and then there is a fallen being, right? The celestial being was Lucifer. He had a very high place in heaven, right. in, in all heaven. Right. The fallen being is Satan, right? So who has, who, whose dominion now is this earth? He's, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Satan is the God of this world, right? He controls this world still. That's his ultimate goal, is to be in complete control of humanity. He's got to wipe humanity and, and, and to wipe humanity right. out because humanity was made in God's image. Right. And, and, and he hates God. Humanity was, was made to replace him. He tried, yes. he tried several times to wipe out, to kill off Israel before Jesus showed up. Yeah. And he's tried since then to kill off Israel, and he's tried to kill off uh, humanity in general. Everything about the sons of God coming down and, and mating with the uh, daughters of men resulted in the destruction of humanity yeah. before the flood. The flood killed them, but they were no longer regular humans. There, yeah. was, a, there was a hybridization. Yeah, so then why was the bloodline so important? It's because he had to get to Jesus. Right. Right. If you don't have a pure bloodline, you can't get to the salvation of the world. So he had to start over again with and then start over with no. Right. <clears throat> He's gonna have to do the same thing again. Right. And, and that's exactly what Jesus said is coming. Yeah. So 
Does that mean that angels come down again and hook up with women? Maybe. Does that mean that the angels that are currently in the pit with uh, was Abaddon as the, the leader of those angels in the pit, who will be loosed? That's what the book of Revelation says. Is that the destruction that they bring, that same sort of thing? Is there some Maybe. genetic manipulation happening even now? to rid humans of humanity. Maybe. All of these things, they're all theories <laughs> yeah. at this point because it doesn't specifically say, but yeah. but quite possibly, we know that it's going to be the same as it was in the days of Noah. Yeah. And that is the major event that pre, that caused God to wipe, come, out to, wipe out, to wipe out everybody who was here the first time. The same thing's getting ready to happen. He's going to come back. Other than the people who are who stayed faithful through the rapture, yes. which is another reason why we don't believe that we're going to be here, is because uh, we're sealed by the Holy Ghost. It's it's not a... It, we, we're already saved. We already have the salvation. The minute Jesus comes, we, we've got it. So the people that come after are going to have to hold fast through this whole thing, the tribulation saints. Yes, yeah, so here's the way to look at this thing, right? We, as the body of Christ, are the ark. Yeah. We're not Noah. Right. We're the ark. We are preachers of righteousness. Right? Excuse me. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. We are righteousness. Right? It's our state of being. We're the ones who should be going to, to others saying, the time is coming. Right. Right? Get right now. Before the ark leaves. Right? The, the ark will leave. That's the rapture, right? And it will leave. And the and it's not going to be a pretty sight here on this earth no, once the ark it, leaves. It says, it says there in Matthew and probably Luke as well, if, if Jesus didn't come back and cut the days short, nobody would have survived. No yeah. flesh would have survived. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be horrible. Yeah. Like, read the book of Revelation. Read, read, um, really, you should read the, <laughs> The entire Bible, but the Old Testament in particular, seeing the chess match between Satan trying to get rid of humanity and specific humans at times, but humanity in general, and God thwarting those plans at every turn. Yeah, Moses was in existence, uh, in existence because of that. Abraham came out of paganism. You know, there there are things that if, the whole idea behind Nimrod. Was he became he began to become a mighty man upon the earth? It didn't talk about mighty men on the earth between Genesis six and Nimrod, which I think was Genesis ten. It's not that far apart in our minds, but it was hundreds of years apart in reality. And the same idea when Sodom and Gomorrah were wiped out, it says you know, the angels were in there trying to sleep with the yeah, men. Yeah, they they were they, no 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 the, the men, men were trying to sleep with the, the men angels. Said, bring them out to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've always read that as, well, that's homosexuality. Well, it sort it of, was. yes. It was homosexuality, but it wasn't dudes they were after. It was angels, angels they were after. They were after. That's right. Yeah, we like topics like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is, you know, you know, we'll hopefully cover more of this. This, this particular topic leads into uh, the Book of Enoch and some other things that we like, which... We saw the comment about how the Book of Enoch is a fairy tale, uh, not necessarily when uh, both Jude and Peter both quote the right. Book of Enoch. So technically, the Book of Enoch is in the Bible. It's yes. mentioned. Yeah. It's mentioned, in, I think, in the Old Testament as the Book of Enoch. But then also those passages are what we know is what we have as a complete Book of Enoch. You know, this will be for another video. Yeah, really yeah. well, we, there's some nuances and some things that probably aren't right. But but there and there's reasons it's not part of the canon. But yeah, there were three books. the 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 prevailing theory is that really the first book is the only legitimate one. The other two. So that, that so what he's talking about yeah. is there's controversy around it, which is why it wasn't canonized. Although it was originally, and it was found in the same spot that the Bible was found in. And uh, there are there are uh, denominations around the world that still use it. Yeah, the, the canonized church. In yeah. Particular, yeah. So it's not like it's some 
you know, we are covering something that is in the Bible. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. That'll be a separate video, but we yeah. really appreciate you watching this one. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a lot of fun for us. <laughs> yeah. So I hope it's been hope a lot you of have fun. fun. Uh, please <laughs> uh, leave comments in there. We try to get to them. We don't always get to them right yeah. away, but we do try to get to them all. Yeah. And uh, thank you for um, uh, Don't use steroids for that commenter that... Uh, <laughs> Not yet. We can cut that out. Just kidding. Um, so we do we do thank you also for uh, liking, subscribing, hit the bell if you want the notifications, and then you know please you know word of mouth is the greatest thing to spread this. We're we're not yeah we're not funding uh, any kind of advertising campaign or anything. Yeah. Getting that out there that's not really the, our goal here. There are, it's not. <laughs> we have other jobs. This yeah. isn't this isn't our. This goal. is why to the other commenter about two. I said two videos a month. You know, I mean, you know, it takes us a little while to get it posted right. and all that kind of stuff. We'll try to do more. Right. We we really enjoy doing it, but you know, yeah. it's scheduling and it's something we do on the side. And we're not, you know, if this channel blew up tomorrow, we're not planning on leaving our jobs. I'm not going to leave my job. I don't think you're ever going to leave your job. I'm not leaving my job. Yeah. Uh, really? I will tell you that we we certainly feel like it's something we should be doing. Yeah, that's the way we feel. So, so we're going to keep doing it, right. and we hope you come along with us to tell your friends. Yeah. And, Throw, like throw some topic ideas down in the comments. Uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll definitely take them in. We've done that before. We've talked about that. Yeah. Um, so we appreciate you. We appreciate every single one of you for um, every time you do it. Thank you so much. For Thank you. In.